I mean, it was in the era of Top of the Pops so where everyone was being more stupid than everyone else. So I went, okay, you're going to be stupid, I'll be stupid. <laughs> and, you know, and that's when I, I started doing the clockwork orange eye makeup and all that. And, and then people said, oh, they're glam. And that's it from now on, you're glam. It only lasted for about 18 months, and the band lasted for 15 years. <laughs> it was just a little section, but that's it, you're glam. Even if you're looking on iTunes, it goes sweet, glam. <laughs> that's, um, you don't think about competition. It's got, it's, the only time we had any competition was when Chin and Chapman were gonna release uh, Susie Quattro single at the same time as us which I thought was stupid because they wanted, you know, consecutive number one or top fives, if you like. And that's the only real time that we were worried about competition as such. But other than that, you go into the studio, you record the song and hope for the best. <laughs> it doesn't matter who else is in the charts, so you just hope for the best. Now, obviously as well, you know, I was just saying earlier, back in the day as well, You've got to sell a lot of records to get into that show. Oh, yeah. Now that's changed an awful lot. What do you think it was about it? It was a fan base, obviously, a very, very good thing, wasn't it? A loyal fan base. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the thing is, back then, there was... You had a 45, and that was it. I don't mean a gun. I mean, you know, a 45 single, and that was it, or an album. You didn't have choices of CDs, tapes, anything. There was no cassettes then. Um, so, uh, I think that to actually own a 45 was you know, tangible, and when you're a fan, that, that's all the difference. Now then, Fitness Core became massively big all the way around the world, but not America. Yeah, I'd never understood that. I always thought they were going to be big here. Um, I, America's a strange land, believe me. Because when we go out on the road, it's like, oh, you recorded that? I, yes. Oh, I thought it was... Uh, no. And so it, it, starting again, last three years, it's, it's like starting again. It's, everyone's going, oh, I didn't realise you did Blockbuster, or we thought that was ELO. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, so yeah, I'm, I was surprised that they didn't make it here because I thought it was ideal music. Now the British music press, if you're well aware, is very good at building you up and building you up before it takes a swipe. Absolutely. Close one, obviously, they'd have to put up with 30 odd years just for three chord wonders. Do you think there's any reality in that? Or is that just bitchiness? It's just bitchiness. If you can't do it, write about it. You know, this amount of times they wrote st stupid things about us and that. eventually I don't, wouldn't read them and I just didn't read you know, critics or anything I just go right fine is that what you want that's what you got and Mick and Andy used to oh my god they've said this and this I go so what they've spelt the name right I don't care <laughs> and if it's their opinion Quo were the first band on a live aid with rock and roll over the world first mm. Choice? For being first on? For the, of the whole rock and roll of the world thing. We certainly lit people's eyes up, I think. Yeah, I've still got that, actually, on tape. I'll have to have a look at it, which means I have to hook up my VHS. 